Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So this is going to be our last video in the traditional frame-by-frame -frame process series. Um, and we're just going to go over how to add highlights and shadows to your character. And this is kind of a little bit of a basic effects as well. So when you are um, doing this in Animate, um, you have layer-based effects in Animate, whereas in Animate Pro and Harmony, you have... Um, effects that are in your network view instead. So I'm going to show you an Animate uh, Pro and Harmony. Actually, I'm showing you in Harmony, but I'm going to show you the Animate Pro and Harmony way because it's a little bit more complex. And then the um, Animate way is quite easy. You just drag and drop the layers on top of each other. So when I want to do highlights and shadows, it's always a good idea to do your highlights and shadows as a separate layer. And this is just going to give you a little bit extra control. So basically the first thing that you're going to do is draw where the shadow is. So I'll add a new layer and I'll call this character, you know, shadow. And then I'll make sure I turn on my light table so I can see my character underneath there. If I don't need to see my rough and my guide, I can just disable those in my timeline or in my network and it will turn them off so I don't see them anymore. So at this point, now I can just go in here and I can draw my shadow. So I'm going to do a pretty rough for the purpose of this um, demo here, but some people do make their shadow quite clean. Um, it kind of just depends on, you know, how, how much detail you want to go into. Like if I want to do a super, you know, high detailed shadow, I can do that and I can have all kinds of different, you know, stuff in here but I don't have to. I can just kind of do it uh, really rough if I want to. So let's just do something like this. So I'm kind of overdrawing off the edge of my character um, and then I'm just going to fill it in. And maybe I'll fill it in at the end so that I can see my onion skin a little bit. Because when I turn on my onion skin, I want to kind of use that as a guide and it's a little bit easier to see the onion skin when I don't have it, um, you know, overlapping the entire canvas there. And I'm just doing this with my uh, brush tool, but if you want to use your pencil tool as well, that's fine. So as his face turns, of course, the um, portion of his face that's going to be in shadow will be a little bit different. And since this one was actually kind of just a copy but slightly further over, I can also copy my shadow. So I can just take the entire shadow layer here and kind of copy it onto the next layer if I want to. You don't have to, but you can. And then from there you can select the shadow and kind of move it into place. And this one I think had a little bit of skew on it as well, so you can skew it a bit. Um, by doing the copy, you get a little bit less of the organic feeling um, in the animation at that point. So, you know, if you really want it to look super organic, then you might just end up redrawing. Okay, so now I can just do the same thing that I did last week where I use the paint unpainted and then I check on the apply to all drawing to multiple drawings. Just be aware when you use Apply to Multiple Drawings that it clicks itself back off again after you do it once. And the reason it does that is because um, you don't want to accidentally forget that you have it on and then kind of like mess up your whole work. So, so there we go. Now I've got my shadow drawn in. Um, but of course, if I go to my camera view, this is where I'm going to be able to see all of my drawing layers. And so if I go to my camera view here, it just looks like a big blob. So that doesn't look so nice. So this is where we get into compositing and special effects in Harmony. And um, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to click on the plus sign in the timeline and then click on cl color card, which is going to stick a white background behind everything. And I'm going to go ahead and lock it so that I don't accidentally grab it by mistake. So that way when it renders out, it renders with a white background. So when I see in my network view, the network view is just another way of displaying stuff, in this case layers. So um, when you check out your layers in your X sheet, they show up as columns. Excuse me. When you check out 
And I'm just going to label these for consistency's sake. So when you check out your layers in uh, Actsheet, it shows up as columns. When you check out your layers in the timeline, they show up as uh, horizontal layers and then as rows. And then when you see them in the network, they show up as these modules or nodes. So it's just another way of representing a layer, and that layer contains drawings. So in my module library, if I click on the tab down there, if you don't have your module library showing down there, I like to put mine down there. So if you don't have it showing down there already, you can always click on the down facing arrow and select module library, and that will add it over here. So the module library contains all the modules. It's all of the effects. And the one that we're going to use, if we go into the filter tab, is called tone. So tone is the one that allows you to define the shadow on the character, which is differentiated from shadow, which is your drop shadow. So if I grab my tone module, I can drag and drop this module into the network view. And when I bring it in, it's got two imports at the top here and one outport at the bottom. So what that means is it's looking to take two drawings as coming in and then it's going to spit one drawing back out again. Whenever you have one that has two drawing inputs at the top, it's always looking for the original drawing on the right hand side. So that's going to be my character drawing. And then it's looking for the shadow or the mask on the left hand side. So I can drag the mask in there. And then I can just drag the tone modules output back down to the bottom again. Now right away, when you look in the OpenGL view here, you already see a preview of what's happening there. So it's applying the shadow to the character and it's kind of um, masking it off there automatically. So you see that bit of a... Uh, and if you notice as you go along that there's anything that doesn't look right to you, you can always go right back to that shadow layer and you can fix it. You can like draw in there and you can actually just fix it directly in there so that you don't have to have anything that doesn't look right to you just fix it. Now, although you see this preview in the OpenGL view, you'll only see the final render when you actually hit this button at the bottom called Render View. And the reason is because whenever you do a render, it takes a second or two to apply the effect. And so to keep things light and to keep the playback fast in the OpenGL view, we um, don't apply the effects in the OpenGL view. But Render View will only render one frame at a time. So, you know, if you want to check out a frame, you have to kind of switch to that frame and then wait a second for it to update and then you're good to go. So at this point, I see how it's dealing with my shadow effect there. And so remember I said earlier, the first thing that you're doing is drawing where the shadow is. Now what we're going to do is define how the shadow looks. So I can go in my tone module and when I go inside here, this is where I can define how it looks. The radius is how blurry it is. So the blur type here is radial. If I turn it down to zero, I get my cell shaded look. That's very anime style kind of. If I turn it up quite a bit, this is getting blurrier. This is more sort of princess in the style, uh, princess in a frog style blurry shadow. And then I can also on top of that change the color. So if you just click on where the color is down there, if I need to have a cool shadow, I can sort of add a little blue there. If I need to have a warm shadow, I can add some warmth to it. And you can kind of play around with it until you get the shadow looking the way that you want it to look. And then any one of these guys that has this function icon next to it can also be animated over time. So keep that in mind. You can also invert the mat, which is kind of neat to know if you want to have it look like, you know, he, the, he's backlit, like he's uh, being lit from behind, and you can do that too. And then if I want to check out how this whole sequence plays, then I probably want to render the whole thing out. Right now, um, I've got it only playing one, uh, playing at 24 frames per second, so it's going to be super fast. If I stop the playback here and then just kind of loop it and play it back, that's how fast my head turn is going. So that's like way too fast. So what I can do though is I can take my drawings and I want to take all the drawing layers that contain my drawings here and then I can go to exposure and set exposure to three. Let's say three here, it's going to slow it down quite a bit. And then I can hit the stop button again and then play back and check out how that is. So now that I like that speed, maybe it's a bit too slow. You know what I'll do is I will change it back to two. So let's just drag to select all those drawings, right click, and then exposure, set exposure to two. 
and then I can just hold the last drawing. So let's hold the last drawing until frame 30. And I can just drag down and then hit F5 to hold that drawing. And then I can just collapse my scene to that scene length and play it back. There we go. So now I see that happening. It's looking pretty good. But I want to check out how it looks with all the effects. So if I want to see the final version with all the effects on it, then this is where I can do the render and play. So what render and play is going to do is render and play is actually going to render out all of those frames and then it's going to gather the frames together and play them back. So this is your final rendered version. It's just a preview of that final rendered version. So now that that's loaded in, I can play it back and check out how it looks. So once you're satisfied with the look of your project, you can go down here into the right module and the right module defines where you want to save your project out. So I can click on the yellow options box and then I can choose to save either a, a sequence of drawings and um, you can use a PNG or a Targa or I can save out a QuickTime movie. And in the QuickTime movie, if you hit Customize, that allows you to choose the options. So I might want to go with like an H.264 and keyframes all, and then click OK. And then I'm ready to render that out. By the way, if after you've done all this, and maybe I want to make, change my color card so that it is blue or something to simulate kind of the sky, maybe he's outside. If after you've done all this, you decide that you don't like the colors on your character, then you can always change them. So remember how I said earlier that we have, um, you know, we, we separate these out into color palettes so that we can do things with those color palettes. If I clone my color palette, it's going to create a copy of that color palette, but this copy is going to let me do some changes to it. If I right click on the copy, I can do the tint panel, and here I can take all of these lines and I can, you know, mix some colors on top of it. So maybe I want to add a little more red to, to make it more warm, and you turn the amount up. So make sure you turn preview on, turn amount up, and then as you start to make changes, you'll see those changes changes applying in your character. So if I need to make him more warm, or if I need to make him more cool, or, you know, maybe I need to, you can blend as well. So, you know, there's all of these different options that you can play with when you are um, trying to get your final look. So go ahead and play around with the tint panel if you want to. If you're trying to make a nighttime version of that animation or whatever, you don't have to do a whole new copy of your animation and you don't have to repaint anything. So now if I'm ready to render this out, I'll just do a file export render network and I'll just select all frames. And so what it's going to do is it's going to write to that location that the right module um, is asking me to write it to. So I can check out my final animation. So I hope you guys had fun doing this traditional process in Harmony and that you learned a lot. And from doing these very simple things, you can create all kinds of different um, animations using frame-by-frame -frame animation. So have fun animating.